So in today's video, I'm going to be discussing coconut oil and its use as a weight loss supplement. If you do a quick internet search, you'll find a lot of personal testimonials and supposed nutrition experts like Dr. Oz saying how coconut oil is this weight loss wonder. And the buzzword that they like to use is talking about coconut oil's medium chain triglycerides, which is a type of fat that it's composed of. And they say the reason it helps you lose weight is because these medium chain fatty acids are metabolized in your body differently. They're metabolized similar to carbohydrates rather than being stored straight to fat. And after doing some research, I found this was true. But I have three issues that I like to discuss of why I feel that coconut oil is not or should not be purported as a weight loss supplement. My first issue is that it's still a saturated fat, and as we all know, we should avoid saturated fats. My third one is, or my second one, is that it's very calorie dense, and my third one is that it doesn't provide the essential fatty acids that our body needs. So on the first one, we all know, we've been taught, you know, since we were in elementary school, that we need to limit our saturated fats in our diet. So I'm not going to not going to touch on that. I'm not going to really go into that real deeply. That's kind of common knowledge, I think, by now. Um, so about these medium chain triglycerides. So they say that it's metabolized in your body differently, and that's true. It's metabolized similar to carbohydrates. <clears throat> Excuse me. It goes straight to your liver, and so essentially you're using your really expensive coconut oil as really expensive carbohydrates. And the thing with it, too, is that coconut oil is not 100% medium-chain triglycerides. It's about 60% medium-chain fatty acids, about 30% saturated fat, and 10% long-chain fatty acids. So obesity can be summed up to too many calories in, not enough calories out. So I don't think it'd be a really good idea if you're trying to lose weight to be spooning on you know, this saturated fat that's really calorie-dense. And all that means calorie-dense is that there's a lot of calories for a little bit of volume. Typical vegetable oils have about 120 calories per one tablespoon, and that's, you know, that's a lot of calories for a small amount. So it definitely would be wise to check your labels because they vary. Um, if you do a quick Google search, you'll find, I think they say that coconut oil is, has about 117 calories. It's like the first result that pops up, but if you look at different labels, like I have one right here, it says 130 calories for one tablespoon, so that's even more than your typical canola oil or extra virgin olive oil that has 120 calories. So speaking of labels, some things to look out for too, besides just, you know, checking the calories, is you'll see on a lot of these health food supplements, things that are marketed for health conscious people, you'll find a lot of words that you might not know what they mean. You know, non-hydrogenated, no hexane, cold press, things like that. So the one I'm looking at right now, I don't know what angle I need to be at, but it says no hexane. Not sure if you can read that. Um, that's, it has to do with the processing, and then you'll also see, yeah, this one says cold pressed. Alright, so what's hexane? You might see that on a few things. Hexane is a petroleum solvent. It's toxic. They use it to extract the oils. It's one oil extraction process. It's very efficient and it's very common, so that's why it's used. Um, expeller press. When you see expeller pressed on something, that doesn't always mean cold press. So expeller press just refers that it's a mechanical extraction rather than the previous one I mentioned. That's a chemical extraction. So expe expeller press means that you use, they use machinery. They just press the life out of it until the oil comes out. Now, this process produces heat naturally just because of the friction of the machinery. So when you see cold pressed, that just means they didn't add additional heat when they're processing it because sometimes they'll add heat to make the oil you know, more viscous so it flows smoother to make the process easier. Cold press just means that they didn't do that. They didn't add additional heat. So who cares? Why does, why does heat matter? Um, one thing I wouldn't recommend doing a lot of high heat cooking with oils because at high heats oils tend to degrade and they produce toxins. Now I don't want to say carcinogens because I don't know 
I haven't found yet if there's been a clear link between cooking at high heats and cancer directly to be able to call it a carcinogen, so I'll just refer to them as toxins for now. Um, as you keep cooking an oil, you can get closer and closer to its smoke point, and at its smoke point, that's when the oil starts to degrade in taste and in the quality of the oil, and it can actually begin to smoke. And you don't want to do that. <laughs> That's the oils. I mean, just for culinary reasons, it's not going to taste good, and you're going to be producing those toxins that you don't want. And if you keep heating it and you're not paying attention, you can actually approach the flash point, which is the point in which the oil will ignite and start a fire. This is a pretty common cause of house fires. If you have your TV on around Thanksgiving time, you'll see the stories of the things, the deep fried Thanksgiving turkey that caught on fire, things like that. So you got to be careful. For that reason also. I would just recommend, I think, you know, just great idea, and I do this too, just stir fry with water or vegetable broth. You know, limit your calories, limit the possible toxins that you might be forming. That's one idea that you can use. And then save your healthy oils, you know, your extra virgin olive oils, things like that, for cold applications. You know, I've heard chefs and dietitians say, oh, add your, your extra virgin olive oil to your pasta after you cooked it, not while you're cooking it. Or make, you know, a healthy salad dressing or something out of it. And on the topic of healthy oils, so our body needs omega-3s and 6s. These are what they call the essential fatty acids. And essential just means that your body can't produce it itself. You have to get it through diet. And the reason this is important is that some vitamins are fat-soluble, meaning they need fat to be absorbed. They're only soluble in fat. So if you don't have enough fat in your body, you're not going to be able to fully absorb these vitamins, like vitamin D, for example. A lot of people hear of how vitamin D deficiency is really common. So that's another reason it's important to have some fats in your diet. Some fat is good. We want some fat. Uh, the current MyPlate recommendation, which some people might be familiar with, that's the most current. You know, we used to have the food pyramid, now it's the MyPlate, the dietary recommendations. And it doesn't account for essential fatty acids as of right now, but Harvard Medical made a revised version that does. So I can put a, a picture of that up here. Um, I think in general nutrition is a good, better, best kind of approach that it's not a one pill fix. A lot of these diet fad type things, they advertise themselves kind of like, just eat a bunch of coconut oil and it'll help you lose weight. Just spoon it on, you know, put it in your toes, put it in your smoothie put in your coffee, you know, whatever, just use it like crazy, you know, help you lose weight. But I think people forget that it's still very calorie dense, like I mentioned earlier. And even if it is converted straight to energy, you still have to use that energy. I mean, otherwise I think it probably would do the same that any unused energy would and be stored away. So I guess my biggest thing is, is people tend to overdo these things. They find out, oh, this latest thing fixes this, let's just go crazy with it. And I think it's because it's easier to accept that this one, this one pill, one pill fix could solve your weight loss issue rather than facing it takes a balanced diet and exercise. I mean, nothing's going to change that. That's been true for how long and until there really is this miracle thing. It just, it takes hard work and that's our society now though. We want quick fixes. So in general, I think also not to totally bash coconut oil, but there are times, like I said, good, better, best approach where coconut oil could be a better thing than what you're currently using. So let's say you're going to make a pie crust, for example, and you would otherwise reach for your partially hydrogenated trans fat, you know, vegetable shortening. Well, you could use coconut oil instead because Unless you live in the desert or somewhere, it's going to be solid at room temperature. Mine is, it's kind of cold here. So you could use that in place of your vegetable shortening. Or say you're making tamales. You could even use it instead of lard. Though I'm not sure how the coconut flavor might taste with tamales. I suppose if you're making sweet tamales, it might taste kind of good. Hmm. I'm going to patent my pina colada tamales, so don't be taking that idea from me. Um, anyway, so back to my point. Is this claim that coconut oil is a weight loss supplement scientific or pseudoscientific? 
And I think with many of these things, it's, you know, not going to be a black or white answer. There's always going to be gray area. And these companies are pretty smart in general to base their claims on some studies. Some of the studies might be a little sketchy, like one of the studies I found showing that coconut oil was a weight loss supplement was on a study of, I think it was 20 men in Malaysia, you know, same gender, small sample size. People have to look at the quality of the study too before saying, hey, look, it, you know, cut inches off their waist, but were other factors taken into consideration, things like this, that even if something sounds like a great hypothesis, you know, oh, it burns as energy, it doesn't store as fat, therefore this must be true, you know, therefore it'll make you lose weight, that kind of thing. No matter how good the hypothesis sounds, it's still just a hypothesis and you need to test it. So you can't just say, this sounds good, therefore it's true. This sounds good, therefore let's test it, see if it's true. So anyway, I think that it's can be a part of a healthy diet, like anything, you know, in moderation, anything like that. But I just don't want people swapping out all their healthy oils with coconut oil because you might be missing out on those necessary nutrients that we need. So I would say that it's somewhere in between science and pseudoscience. I know that's not the greatest answer, but like I said, it's not always cut and dry with these sorts of things, but as far as weight loss goes, I think that's definitely more pseudoscience, that it's not your one pill fix, but it could be part of your diet. There's some, you know, types of cooking that kind of require coconut oil. I know, I believe it's Thai cooking. Some Thai dishes require you to use or recommend for the full flavor that you use coconut oil. So yeah. I hope you enjoyed my video, and if you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to leave them. I don't claim to be an expert on these things. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a dietitian. I'm just somebody who loves to research and likes to kind of get the information out there and cut through the, the BS and see what's really true about something rather than just hopping on the bandwagon and just getting something to get it. So this is the first claim I'll look into. I'll also be doing videos on other claims of coconut oil, so stay tuned if you're curious about other claims that coconut oil has, and I'll do videos on other things as well. If you have any recommendations, please put them. I'd really appreciate it. Take care.